Nobody should have beat The Undertaker. He should have had the streak forever. No. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share these videos. But we were talking about WrestleMania. And I remember I was uh, at a WrestleMania. I was a coach. 2014 because it was WrestleMania 30. It was in New Orleans. She and I were in the back in the green room. And I saw everybody back in the green room. I remember talking, you know, getting excited because I, I got to talk to Lanny Poffo back there. I enjoyed talking to him. Somebody else I saw back there was uh, David Flair. When David Flair came to Louisville, I, I, I worked with David a lot. And he, he and I wrestled a lot of tag matches against each other. You know, I became real good friends with David Flair. He was in the back in the green room. And he said uh, he had some tickets for in the arena, but it was on, you know, it was on the other side if I wanted to go sit in the arena. And I, I didn't really, I wasn't really keen to sit in the arena. I was going to turn him down when... My wife, Stephanie, goes, well, I'm going to sit in the arena. Okay, so we'll grab him. So David Flair had a huge beard at the time, almost didn't recognize him, gave us the tickets, and we start walking. So the match going into the ring was Cena against Bray Wyatt. And we were in the Superdome there in, in uh, uh, New Orleans. And we start walking around the Superdome. And Cena and Bray Wyatt are going. And I think their match was probably 20 to 25 minutes. And when we finally walked all the way around the Superdome to the other side to get to the seat, that match just comes to the end, one, two, three. 25 minutes to walk all the way around the Superdome. And it looks like this is a regular size arena, which you can cover in much less time. My goodness. So we get to the seat there. And the next match was The Undertaker against Brock Lesnar. Everybody knows what happened now. The streak came to an end. And I remember sitting there. We didn't, it wasn't real close up front. It was, but it wasn't bad seats. We, we could see good. And I remember see well. <laughs> see, we could see good. I remember hearing the people behind us saying, "Oh, if the Undertaker loses, I'm never going to watch WWE again. I'll, I'll leave right now. And if he, he ain't losing, and if he loses, I'm going to tear up my tickets right now." And okay, I didn't know what the finish was. I, I, as far as I know, nobody knew what the finish was, but a select few, and I don't even know who those people were. But the finish happened, one, two, three, and I've never, I'm, I'm so excited that, I'm so glad that I got to be in the actual arena when the streak ended for the feeling of that experience. When not many people get together, I mean, it, it, it gets electric and, and conformative and, and people's energy start crisping and crossing and it felt like everything got sucked out of that building. And those people just stopped there for a second and they did all that stuff they did at the end, and Taker walked off, and then it's almost like people, in my opinion, people were just still almost half mesmerized, and I think the next match after that was like a girls' eight or ten, ten woman tag match, and once they got in, the people just came back to like, what the F just happened? He didn't lose, and just, I felt bad for the girls, because they, they, they got no attention or match, because everybody was still flabbergasted about uh, The Undertaker. But I just remember being in there and feeling that, you know, just that raw emotion of, like, the people didn't think that would ever happen. Not going to happen. No, no. He, he's, he's never going to lose the streak, and he gets beat right in the middle of the ring. Iconic moment. Iconic moment. And then you hear people talk about, well, nobody should have beat The Undertaker. He should have had the streak forever. No. No. That's not what you do in the business. You reach down and pull somebody up. The Undertaker was a super duper star. I mean, we call them all superstars, but there's definitely a, a, a slight difference in perception for some people in WWE and some others in WWE. And Undertaker, you know, has the respect and has been there so long. He's like a, a super duper star. And who else was going to beat him? Who else would beat the Undertaker in the street? Nobody on that roster would the people believe. You know, oh, let's have CM Punk beat him. No, nobody's going to believe that. Oh, let's have Randy beat him. Nobody's going to believe that. You know, oh, let's have oh, let's have Triple H beat him. Nobody's going to believe that. It had to be Brock. Brock was the only one at the time that was that, that was legitimate enough to be the guy to beat the Undertaker and stop the streak. I think it was a perfect decision. Oh, I was definitely surprised. I was definitely surprised because, I mean, I didn't think they were going to stop the streak. You know, I really didn't think much about it. You know, I was there in a, a capacity to coach the uh, the NXT guys. It was a good surprise. Like, oh wow, this is really something. This is a moment here. But I didn't, I didn't think. But I remember coming back and uh, Terry Taylor was telling me he was on the headset, and he was telling me that 
normally uh, on the headset, they'll say, okay, they're getting ready to go home or whatever. They're, they're kind of, you'll hear the instructions, but he said that as they started to go home in the ring, the headset just went, just went off, like, like went black. Nobody was talking. And then they did the finish. And then I think they came back up and called for whatever happened next, you know? So, I mean, it was, I think it was a, I think it was like a handful of people that, that, that knew that was going to happen. No, I, I didn't see anybody after. I did see Brock before, and, and like, he, he came up to me and, and hugged me and, like, stopped. Like, he, he was a big train of people, all his people following him, and he stopped and talked to me for a second. I mean, he was really asking about, you know, how's your wife? Because he had met Stephanie, and they bonded over uh, the differences of someone coming from the Midwest to living in the Louisville, Kentuckiana area. So he, he asked me if... Uh, it's part of, you know, he, he's from South Dakota, his family's from South Dakota, Brock is. But here's one thing that happened, right? Listen to this, okay? So I was a coach earlier in the day. We're at the uh, Superdome there, and people are coming in in the in the back where it's the friends and the families and, and the tech crew and the wrestlers, and we got all these different buses coming in. And they had a whole staff for this. WB had a whole staff that was that was shuffling people in and telling them where to go. And it was, again, WWE's degree of, of excellence in every department. And this was another one. They had their stuff down. They knew exactly what they were supposed to do. Get people to the green room. You know, sh show families how to get where. For some reason, I was instructed. I feel like Johnny Ace told me this, but I don't really remember. I could be wrong. Could have been, could have been uh, someone else. But all of a sudden, they were like, you know, help the, them get people in. And I wasn't supposed to let people down the ramp. They were supposed to come into the bus down there. And all of a sudden, somebody's coming down the ramp, and they're not supposed to come. And I don't know what I'm doing. This isn't my job. I just got put here. I'm, I'm, I was coaching matches earlier, and somebody hands me a phone. And I'm trying to say, listen, you can't come in. You got to come in down here. Hulk Hogan on the phone. Hey, what's going on? Get in there. And I'm like, uh, yes, sir. And I'm like, I feel like the biggest... I don't even think, I don't think he knew it was me. Maybe he did, but I, I'm, I'm not sure. But I feel like just like the biggest, like, I got set up, you know, go over there and, and don't let anybody in. Make sure they go down there. And then you got the Hulkster's family coming in. I'm, I'm the one that, 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 that gets the first phone call. Hey, look, the family getting in, brother? No, he didn't say that, but. <laughs> if you like this video and you want to see more content from Eugene Behind the Scenes, click on one of these videos. They are awesome.